Good evening and welcome to another TDM talk show. Tonight we have Kanal Chong Yegerus, a visual artist who currently lives and works in Helsinki, Finland. Good evening, uh, Ms. Yegerus, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me here. So before we delve into your work, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, me, uh, I grew up in an artistic family. My father is an artist, so and I grew up in Macau. And after that, I uh, went to China, studied fine art in the uh, Guangzhou uh, Fine Art Academy. I studied there uh, for some years. And after that, I returned to Macau. And then I studied in Hong Kong, the, the graphic design in the Hong Kong Open University for one year. And then, uh, and because I got married to uh, my husband, and uh, he is uh, he's from Finland. So after I married to my husband, and because of his work, he works for a Finnish uh, international company. So be because of his work, so we've been living in uh, uh, many different places and countries. Like we've been living in Hong Kong for about three years, living in Shanghai for two years and living in France for two years. And my son, our son Philip, he was born in France and living in uh, Switzerland for two years. And our daughter, Sabrina, she was born in Switzerland. And then the kids, and after that we live in Italy. And kids, they, uh, they, they actually they sort of growing up in Italy. And when they were little, they spoke Italian to one another when they were little. And then, of course, we moved to Africa. We moved to Taka, and we lived there for about four years. Mm -hmm. And then after that, uh, then we would like the children to grow up in Finland for the education and to have a place they call like home. Because, of course, for us, we, we love that to live in different places, because for, especially for me as an artist, uh, to experience different culture is really, really great. And it's great for my work as well. But then for the kids, and then we decided to move back to Finland. That was in 2000, 2005. So we moved back to Finland, and kids started to go to school there. They, they went to the local school, they Swedish. Because my husband, he is a, his native language is a Swedish. Even he's a Finnish, but you know, in Finland, it's a bilingual country. So they have Swedish and Finnish. Both languages are official languages. So uh, our children, they speak uh, like a Swedish at home, but they are learning Finnish mm -hmm. at school every day. So they could manage also in, in Finnish. So then after that, so we settled down in Finland since 2005. So is, but your artistic uh, start, was it because your family was all artistic, so you wanted to follow in their steps, or was that also something that you wanted to do? It was something that actually I wanted to do since I was a very little girl. I, I still remember since I was a very little girl, I, I, I have always wanted to be an artist, you know, <laughs> in, the, when, in those days to be an artist, like it's, it has been always with me. And then of course, I, I was very lucky because my parents are very supportive to my uh, to, for me to pursue my dream. And then that's, that was also why that, even though in Macau I went to, uh, I studied with uh, Tan Chi Song. It's, Tan Chi Song, it was, he was one of, I think, quite known artists in, in, in Macau, but he passed away some years ago. Mm -hmm. I was, I've been studying with him for quite many years during my youth, and then, uh, and of course, I participate uh, quite many uh, group exhibitions, like a youth exhibitions when I was when I was young, and then then I went to study more like uh, in the Fine Art Academy in Guangzhou because it was supposed to be one of the best one also in China, mm -hmm. so I, I've been studying there, yeah. So do you think because you had such an international, worldwide uh, upbringing, and you were in a, a lot of different places, and your artistic career followed through all those places, right? Mm. So do you feel like um, some uh, being an artist abroad maybe better 
or more suitable than being here in Macau? Uh, I can't say that because <laughs> I have been always living abroad, so I can't really compare that. Is it better to be living in to be living abroad for artists or to live in Macau? Mm -hmm. But for myself, in my artistic like uh, creativity, it is very important experience for me. And living in different countries, uh, even maybe not consciously but subconsciously. The different culture, the people, different people you met, and different sort of art scene, artists, all the colleagues you make, you met, they do, they do have some ways. Let's say subconsciously, influence my work in some way, and and for me, those elements they are really important in my work. So do you feel like, but in Finland, you're still uh, doing artistic things, right? You still paint oh, yes. in Finland. <laughs> yeah. You feel more inspired in Finland. <laughs> what do you paint in Finland? Um, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I cannot say more inspired. I got inspired when I live in like every different new environment in every place I live. And that moment, of course, I got, I, when you do painting, like when I do painting, of course, I paint with my heart. And then, of course, when I live in that moment, that place is, of course, you, you paint with the sensation, whatever. So in Finland, of course, I do have, maybe I do have influence with the Nordic country. Maybe my color is becoming a little bit more plain and maybe also more peaceful. Like in Africa, my color can be extremely uh, vibrant, like, a, like a, um, more colorful, mm -hmm. more strong. Maybe in Finland, my color is getting a little bit more soft. Yeah. So I don't know, because is it because of the Nordic and is it because of different environment? But for me, I will think so, yeah. And do you come back to Macau quite often? Yeah, my parents, they live here. So and I love to come back here. And of course, my brother and lot of my family, very close family, they live here. I come here, I come to Macau whenever I have a chance. And when the kids were little, I try to bring them to visit Macau once a year. But now they are, so, they are a little bit grown up because my son now, he is uh, already 19. He studied already at the university and my daughter, she's 17 and she's going to graduate from high school. And they are so busy. So I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't take them anymore because they have their own schedules. So nowadays, mostly during the last few years, when I come back to Macau, I, I came on my own. So the kids, they, I try to, I hope they will have more time to come also, of course. Are yeah. they also following artistic career? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, they have, my son, he studied at the university. He was studying economic and management. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, she is still in between many different objects. She, she, she sometimes she wants to study this and that. I, I, I've, I think they should follow their heart. Mm -hmm. And as, especially for art, I think you really have to do it. If you really do it, it really has to come from your soul. You, you can't force someone to do it. So I, for my children, if they want to do it, if my daughter, for example, she's, a, she's also very, She's, she's, she's quite, let's say as a mother, I would say that maybe for all the parents as well, I think they are really good enjoying or at their creativities. Mm -hmm. But then uh, she never said to me they want to be, she want to be an artist. But if she one day she'll tell me, Mama, I want to be an artist, I will be really give her all my support. But I will not put this in her, but she, it has to come from herself. Yeah. Um, going back to the fact you come back to Macau very often, you've, I'm pretty sure you've noticed that Macau has developed quite a lot and that the government is uh, trying to develop it, uh, develop the city into a more touristic, leisure kind of place and also trying to advertise more the culture. Do you think that this has helped artists uh, develop here in Macau? Do you think that maybe now uh, artists can have a bigger, better chance to be, to pursue that career here in Macau? 
I definitely, I, I think so, yes. Because there are more chances for artists who, if they want to pursue a, along the uh, artistic path, and they will have more chances to survive. Mm -hmm. Like uh, maybe more opportunity to, to live. I think it's really great, yes. But of course, since, uh, I mean, I do come here very often, but most of the time when, I, when I'm, I'm in Macau, I spend a lot of time mostly with my parents. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I, I must, I must uh, say that I don't know a lot about the art scene in Macau, but I would like to learn more about it, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, so do you, have you ever had exhibitions here in Macau? No. Oh, yes. You it, have? Yes, I have. I have, uh, I think it was in uh, 2013, or 2013 or 14, a few years ago, mm -hmm. I had quite a big exhibition with uh, 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 Ray Cunha uh, uh, Foundation. Yeah. And that was really one of the most uh, wonderful experience. And, uh, I really appreciate a lot of the, all the help I got from the foundation and all their support. Yeah. And now you're working on a art project called the Blue and Red Art Project. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, this art project it was come it came from uh, because in it was in the beginning of 2015, and that moment I was. Uh, I was uh, starting. I, I have been really. In, I had really a lot of exhibitions and very intensive, because the exhibition had been come going like one after another. So I've been working too much, like working nonstop for like ten years, and all the time I was thinking that I I should take a break. You know, I I should take one year break. I'm not. I I, I should not do any exhibition during that year. Then when I went back to, I returned to uh, Finland that moment and found another opening. Mm -hmm. And then my uh, gallery in Finland, one of my galleries, the director contacted me, wanted to ask me to do another exhibition, so planning for another exhibition. And I was thinking that, okay, uh, maybe I want to do something different. I want to do, I don't want to do exhibition after exhibition and I want to experience something new. Then I was at her gallery, she was having a group show. And I say, and I was, to, I was talking to her, I say, yeah, maybe I can cooperate with another artist, maybe to do a project. That will be something different than what I use, I always used to do, you know, or only on myself as an artist. So my, the director say, oh, that sounds great. And which artist would you like to cooperate with? So I, I, at that moment I was standing at the one the artist painting there, I said, "Oh, I I I I love her painting. I think I can do. A, I would love to be cooperate with Nana." Mm -hmm. And my gallery said, "Oh, but that would be fantastic. Two of you would do a, a project together." So, but I didn't know her those days. I mean, uh, and then my gallery she would make the connection for us to meet and then the project start at that moment. That's in the beginning of 2015. And it was a long process because we have so many meetings because we need to get the idea together, how to do and what to do. And then of course, then we, we decide because she's Finnish and I'm Chinese. So basically we are from two different uh, culture background. So we do some different like art and culture exchange because the exchange is not only about the outside, what the environment who make who we are, but also from our inside who we are. Mm -hmm. Because that was the moment that we decided to commit to this project. And then it has been going on for a long time now, have been going on for two years. Mm -hmm. And along the project, of course, there are many great moments, and of course, there are also up and down moments. Mm -hmm. and all in all, that was a really, I would say it was, it was really a great experience and great learning. Not only learn, learning to know one another, mm -hmm. but you also learn to know more about yourself. So during the project, we were, first we were traveling uh, the whole Finland, 
by train, by car, and we do the filming. We have the filming. We have a filming di director, let's say, we're filming everything. And then also we have a long like a, a trip to China. Mm -hmm. We travel all the way from Beijing to Lhasa, to Tibet. Mm -hmm. We go around the whole places and we do this project to experience the, the distance. Like, because that moment we're also thinking, as an artist, very often we only stay in the studio and we create, create the, what we create is from our imagination. Then in that moment we 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 think that we put the we put our project into more active like interaction with the with the public with the environment, and I think it was a really a wonderful thing to do. And now the project has been going very well, and we next year, actually not next year in June this year, the eighth of June we will have the, this project will be first showing in the in a Finlayson Arts Centre in Finland. Mm -hmm. And next year, it will be showing in four different museums in Finland. Uh, for example, in the Karandi Art Museum, mm -hmm. in the uh, Yuanzhou Art Museum, Sala Art Museum, and uh, is the big, I have to look at the name, and another museum also in another city, which I, it has a very Finnish name, so <laughs> I have to learn how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. And then also in China, we have also making some contact to, to show in some museums in China for this project. So we are looking forward to continue with it. Yeah. yeah but what were the challenges of having a project like this and working with another artist? Because <laughs> when you work alone, it's like everything is your, what you feel and how you achieve it and everything. So how was it working with somebody else? Uh, you are really getting into the point. <laughs> oh, mm. I would, I would say that of course, as an artist, as a we are we all very individual, independent. You know, artists, mm -hmm. we are all very independent because we do what we do, and it's like we are always try to protect. It's like we are building up. We are building an island to ourselves, and we try to protect the island. We put all the fences there because this is ours. Mm -hmm. Because we try to get to recognize ourselves. That is like an artist is every artist is extremely independent in that way. Mm -hmm. Then to put two really independent <laughs> personality together, of course, there's there's moment there's some uh, uh, maybe small. Uh, like uh, we have different kind of views and we need to find resolutions. And uh, the, the art moment, like uh, we got some idea, we share together, fantastic. It's like, uh, we are, it's like we are having the high, <laughs> you know, like we share, yes, 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 you know. But then of course that moment when we disagree with one another, mm -hmm. then it's getting into a little bit difficult. But how but, do you get to a consensus, how does that happen? Uh, I guess because now we are not in our, both of us, we are not in our 20 anymore. So I guess along these different uh, um, opinions or disagreement, we, we do learn to deal with it very maturely like an adult. Mm -hmm. So we try to, to find what is the good way and we try not to to, 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 to burn the bridge, you know. <laughs> so, and so far it works, it's okay, it works. I, 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 am, I have been learning a lot during the project and I am very happy with it, yeah. But what is the aim of this project? Was it more like a self-discovery, trying to do something different? What's the aim? Uh, yes, exactly. The aim is to, to, to discover oneself, like, uh, who we are, right? And also to share, to, to share uh, what we have mm -hmm. and to learn from one another. And then of course, along the path uh, is to, to try to, to learn how to work with one and in a, another is also a very good element. Because this, if I would not do this project 
I think I'll be lack of this experience. Mm. So I, I, I appreciate that, yes, a lot. I mean, we are all, I think it's for growing. We are all growing. We try to grow as well, mm -hmm. you know, so. <laughs> it's discovering yourself and somebody else, right? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else and the society and, you know, the environment. And all this uh, experience, of course, give us the new element and input mm -hmm. when we do our work, when we paint. And actually, it is really in my in my in myself. Uh, like for example, after I have the trip, the long trip with the, with Nana in China, uh, when I get back to my studio to work, I really do find that I have a lot of like a new, very uh, amazing element in my work. Mm -hmm. And I imagine this. I have been trying to analyze if this new element, if I have not been doing. The trip with her, would I have that element in the world? I, I cannot say yes and I cannot say no, but obviously those element is after what I have been experienced in China very closely with another artist, mm -hmm. who have very deep communication, you know, all this, and it come when I get back to the studio, I can, I have this, this kind of new excitement or let's say inspiration, mm -hmm. an element that I think for me, it's a, it's a very powerful, powerful element that I have in my work after that. And, and I really, I'm happy about it, yeah. And this project will be exhibited in uh, Switzerland, Finland and China. Yes, exactly. Why did you choose those three? First, first actually the project has only thinking, first we've been only thinking to show in Finland because that project in the beginning is not so huge, it's not so big. Mm -hmm. We all want, only want to do something together, do, to do something, do a project together and do some nice, uh, good exhibition together in Finland. Mm -hmm. But then since this project has been like growing and it has been have so much uh, element about China culture, Finland culture, and then we think, uh, why only Finland? We should show it also in China. Mm, that's why that we also make the connection to the museums in China and we like to show in both places, which I think, because I think for us the experience maybe is not only the, the uh, cooperation to learn about each uh, one another, the artists and the different environment, China and, and Finland, but I think during the exhibition in different places in Finland and in China, Again, that was also another learning. When the exhibition was there, I'm sure that there will be new things for us to learn, you know. So I think that was really good. That was good. And why Switzerland? Switzerland is uh, Switzerland. Actually, it was, uh, it was an extra. We haven't planned that. But it was only because I was, uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was showing in uh, uh, Basel, Scope, a Basel Scope in, in, in Switzerland. And I got to, I met this uh, uh, Art Basel Center, the director. Mm. So since I was there, I met him and I was uh, presenting him what I w I'm doing. So uh, very naturally, I showed him about the project because that was what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Then he was very interested and then said, would you like to show it here? I said, yes, why not? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it was. He went. He would go there. It will be. We'll be showing the project there in uh, October. Yeah. And what is it that we uh, visitors will be able to see in these exhibitions? Uh, I think in the exhibition, I hope the visitor can see that that our project have a lot of different elements that from two different cultures, and then it's like a we as two artists. Uh, we, we see the same thing, we saw the same thing, we experience the same environment at the same moment, mm -hmm. but from our work, we have different expressions. So I think the audience, I, I, they can see that, I think they can see the abundance of like the different way of how to express one element, but you, have, you can have so many ways to ex express it. Mm -hmm. So as for us, two different artists, we see maybe the same glasses of what, but then we, when we express on, on our work, then we, 
we might express it very differently. I think that will be a very interesting thing. Are you and uh, Nana, was it, uh, same kind of visual artist? You do the same kind of painting? Uh, I, uh, Nana, she was uh, using, yeah, I, I, I think we are, of course we are visual artists, but Nana was doing uh, with oil. And I use mostly, for me, I use a lot uh, like uh, mixed media. Mm -hmm. In my work, I have a lot of different media. In my work, I use, I, I normally work on different layers on the, on the rice paper. Mm -hmm. And I use different layers, painting of rice paper to continue to work on canvas to get a different depth. And I also use other objects in my work. Objects can be clothes, can be jeans, can be scarf, can be piece of wood, can be metal. I mean, I, I my my uh, technique or my uh, media is, is is more like mixed media. And I think Nana's media, she was the main media was oil. So I I can only say that is maybe different. Other than that, I don't know. <laughs> And what is your next move? Are you working on anything else besides this project? Yes, actually what I want to very much want to talk also is about, I just now, like uh, the day before yesterday, I just came back from Beijing because I was in Beijing for three weeks because I was very honored to be invited to be there for the artist in resident uh, project. I was there in Beijing for three weeks to work in the studio for this uh, artist in residence project. Mm -hmm. And now after the project, I have a solo exhibition follow up this project. Mm -hmm. So now actually I have the exhibition going on in being the gallery in Beijing. Mm -hmm. And the exhibition is going to be there until the end of April. And you're very welcome if you have a chance to go to Beijing, you go and visit my exhibition there. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Um, one last question. Uh, do you have any plans on making an exhibition here in Macau? <laughs> Bringing back to the roots. Since you did grow up here, any plans on coming back and showing, showcasing your art here? Yeah, absolutely. I will, if I have a chance, I would love to come back here and do an exhibition. Actually, this morning, I was just have a interview with the Macau uh, Art Museum mm -hmm. that we are discussing if there's any possibility that I can show uh, my work mm -hmm. in the Macau Art Museum. And I'm very much, very much looking forward to it and I hope I'll have that chance. To but show can it. we expect it soon or maybe near future? In the near future, because <laughs> for the moment I have quite a lot of exhibition going on. Mm -hmm. Like next year, I will have uh, exhibitions in four different museums, and I still haven't had work for it. I have to prepare painting for it. Mm -hmm. And for Macau, if I will have a chance to show it here, I hope it will be maybe 2019, uh, if that's possible, of course. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it was great talking to you and learning about your artistic career and all of your um, uh, artwork. So I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. And to you at home, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back next week. Until then, good night. <laughs>